Hello friends, welcome back to another lecture. In today's lecture, we are going to see rigid body equilibrium. When the force and couple are both equal and zero, the external forces from a system equivalent to zero and the rigid body is said to be in equilibrium. The necessary and sufficient condition for equilibrium of a rigid body therefore can be obtained by setting R and M equal to zero in the relation that is sigma F is equal to zero and moment about any point is equal to zero. Resolving each force and each moment into its rectangular components, we can express the necessary and sufficient condition for the equilibrium of a rigid body with the following six scalar equations. Sigma Fx, sigma Fy and sigma Fz equal to zero and sigma Mx, sigma My and sigma Mz equal to zero. The equations obtained can be used to determine unknown forces applied to the rigid body or unknown reactions exerted on it by its support. We note that equation 2 expresses the fact that the components of the external force in the x, y and z directions are balanced. Similarly, for equation 3 expresses the fact that the moments of the external force about x, y and z axis are balanced. Therefore, for a rigid body in equilibrium, the system of external forces will impart no translation or rotational motion to the body considered. In order to write the equation of equilibrium for a rigid body, it is essential to first identify all the forces acting on that body and then draw the corresponding free body diagram. So now free body diagram. In solving a problem concerning the equilibrium of a rigid body, it is essential to consider all the forces acting on the body. It is equally important to exclude any forces which is not directly applied on the body. Omitting a force or adding an extraneous one would destroy the conditions of equilibrium. Therefore, the first step in the solution of a problem should be to draw a free body diagram of the rigid body under consideration. Let us summarize here the various steps which must be followed in drawing a free body diagram. One. A clear decision should be made regarding the choice of the free body to be used. This body is then detached from the ground and is separated from all other bodies. The contour of the body thus isolated is sketched. 2. The external force should be indicated on the free body diagram. These forces represent the actions exerted on the free body by the ground and by the bodies which have been detached. They should be applied at various points where the free body was supposed to be grounded or was connected to other bodies. The weight of the free body should also be included among the external forces. Since it represents the attraction exerted by the earth on various particles forming the free body, the weight should be applied at the center of the gravity of the body. When the body is made of several parts, the forces the various parts exert on each other should not be included among the external forces. Coming to the next step, the magnitudes and the direction of the known external forces should be clearly marked on the free body diagram. When indicating the direction of these forces, it must be remembered that the forces shown on the free body diagram must be those which are exerted on and not by the free body. Known external forces generally include the weight of the body and the forces applied for a given purpose. Coming to the next step, unknown external forces usually consist of the reactions through which the ground and the other bodies oppose a possible motion of the free body. The reaction constrains the free body to remain in the same position and for that reason sometimes called constraining forces. Reactions are exerted at the points where the free body is supported or connected to other bodies and should be clearly indicated. The free body diagram should also include dimensions since these may be needed in the computation of moments of forces. Any other detail however should be omitted. The reactions exerted on two dimensional structures can be divided into three groups corresponding to three types of supports or connections. Number one, reactions equivalent to a force with known line of action. Supports and connections causing reactions of this type 
include rollers, rockers, frictionless surfaces, short links and cables, collars or frictionless rods and frictionless pins in slot. The second one is a reaction equivalent to a force of unknown direction and magnitude. There are chances that you don't know neither the magnitude nor the direction of the reaction force. And the third one is reaction equivalent to a force and a couple. These reactions are caused by fixed supports which oppose any motion of a free body and thus constrain it completely. Now these are some of the common support reactions that we were discussing about. These are the type 1 where you have a roller or a rocker or a frictionless surface or a short cable, a short link or even a collar on a frictionless rod. All these form a type 1 kind of reaction where you know that the reaction is going to be in a predefined or a predetermined line of action and only unknown would be the magnitude and hence the number of unknowns becomes 1. The second kind are like this where frictions acting on a hinge or on a rough surface you have a pin. In both these cases we do not know neither the force nor the line of action of the reaction. Hence they have two unknowns and the last one or the third one is a fixed support where you do not have either the direction or magnitude of the force and you also do not have the reaction that can be caused due to a moment. So they have three unknown forces. With these support reactions introduction let us conclude this session. Let us solve a problem in the next video. Thank you.